Hi, this is Jeff McCormick with Crunchy Data. Uh, today I'm going to present um, the new Postgres operator, which we've open sourced last week. Um, you'll see it out in the GitHub and our Crunchy Data Postgres operator repo. And it's a project that um, is based on the notion that CoreOS introduced this time last year at KubeCon, and that being an operator uh, for stateful applications, things like databases. Um, what we've done is taken that concept and applied it to the Postgres database. And if you uh, deploy the Postgres operator that we've written, you'll see something like this. You'll see a deployment of this application called Postgres operator. Uh, and what that is is a set of uh, Golang code essentially that interacts with the Kubernetes cluster and uh, based on Kubernetes third-party resources and changes to those uh, it'll do certain things. If you look at uh, the third-party resources it creates it'll uh, create three types essentially PG backup, PG cluster, and PG database and you, when you create occurrences of those uh, resource types, um, it'll cause the operator to do different things. It's watching and looking for events on those resource types. Now, when you, as a user, want to interact with this Postgres operator, we've created a way to do that by means of a command line uh, tool called PGO. And PGO is part of the Postgres operator project and it just allows you to essentially create these third-party resource um, occurrences and remove them. And when you do that, that is essentially a, a way of interacting directly with the Postgres operator. So to create a Postgres database using this operator, you would do a command like this, PGO create database. We'll call this one J1DB. And you're essentially assigning a, a, a human name to a Postgres database at this point. And if you do a PGO show database, J1DB, you'll see that it, the operator created a pod and a service um, based upon what the PGO create command did. And at this point, you have a Postgres database container out there running at that service IP address. And you could use the Postgres client or psql command essentially at this point to log in and work with this database. Um, the next feature we wanted to support in this initial operator release was the, the ability to, to run a full backup of one of these created databases. So to do that, you would run PGO create backup and then give it the name of what you want to backup. And whenever the operator sees a request like that, it'll create, instantiate a Kubernetes job with a backup container in there. And that backup container will connect to the database that you want to backup, create the backup archive files on a newly created persistent volume claim and the operator is doing all of that essentially. If you want to look at the, the results or the status of that backup, you can say PGO show backup. The command output here that's useful or most useful is the name of the database backup persistent volume claim that gets generated as well as the backup path that was um, that's out there on that PVC. So this command actually is doing, um, you can think of as a LS command on that backup PVC. So any backups that are out there on that PVC, you'll see. Um, we can use those bits of information now to do a database restore. You do a database restore by saying PGO create database, and you can type in dash dash help, and it'll show you the 
extra flags that are required to do a restore. What we'll do is give this restore name uh, database a name of restore. And we'll specify the backup path. And then we'll specify the backup PVC. And that command, uh, when executed, will create a new database, but it'll pass in enough information uh, about the backup to be a clue to the Postgres container to, that you want to actually restore from a backup. And it'll pull in the backup files into the database and use those instead of creating uh, a new database, a set of data files for you. Um, the major feature that's left that we wanted to create was the ability to um, instantiate a Postgres cluster. And in, in this case, a Postgres cluster is a single master and multiple read-only replicas that are replicating with that master. And the way you do that is you say PGO create cluster and give it a cluster name like JCL1 is a good Then you can look at the cluster by saying PGO show cluster JCL1. And the operator created several things um, when, you, when you told it you wanted to create a cluster. And it uses a template strategy to, de to determine what your cluster is actually going to be made up of. And in this case, the default cluster is two deployments, one for the master and then one for the replicas. It'll create a default of two replicas and then a service for the master and a service for the replicas. Um, different PGO parameters are determined by um, the, the PGO configuration file, which is in your home directory, and it's .pgo.yaml. And if you look at that configuration file, um, you can specify different values in there to override the defaults of different kinds of database parameters that would get created. Uh, that's what we wanted to demonstrate today. It's an initial release of the Postgres operator. We encourage you to take a look at the GitHub repo. And also, we like to hear from users as to features they would like to see in this. And in the future releases, you'll see um, more advanced clustering um, features, um, as well as some monitoring features uh, that will be added in and will allow users to um, use the operator to get those um, DBA-like features um, that they would expect. Uh, thank you very much.